Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiser. Alright guys, Rush, let us continue on from where we last left off. So, we've conquered Central Asia, Don Kuban, very much a part of Russia once again. And I'm still internally debating whether or not it makes sense to attack Germany early. Right? Because from my perspective... Well, they have gotten rid of uh, Black Monday now. What about your neighbors? You still have Black Monday. You're still dealing with Black Monday. You got terrible penalties. Like, I, I think attacking early makes sense. And now we see that Indonesia has declared independence. I don't know. I guess we'd want to join the Internationale of any faction, but... The thing is that we, we cannot rely on France joining right away. Because while, again, France, it says June 14, 1939, this does change after we declare war. Once we're at war with um, Germany, this opens up. It doesn't, I don't, it doesn't tell you that. It doesn't say, like, either after 1939 or Russia is at war with Germany, this opens up. It's, like, literally just a different... It's literally just a different focus. I'm trying to think, like, is there anything that we would want? I mean, recovery rate's pretty good. Cost reduction of land. I love how these actually don't... Yeah, due to no step back, how they change it, these literally all do the exact same thing. It's just what comes under underneath them that changes a little bit. Which I think is very funny. I mean, it makes sense. That's how they would, how they would still do it. 105. You require us to complete BVSR first. And I, you're here. Okay. Um. I mean, we could go for. You know, damage to garrisons before the war starts makes sense. Damage to garrisons, we will then reinforce the government. I literally think after that, we're going to attack Germany. I personally see no good reason, as of right now, we don't just start the war early. I mean, Poland is still not in a faction. Hopefully, he'll join the International at some point. I mean, this guy's got a great beard, so you, you hope he joins sooner rather than later. And then we've also got Serbia. We can also invite Greece. We can invite Greece after we've declared war on Germany. Serbia again is a little bit trickier because you're not you're not in the Belgrade Pact anymore. And usually when we invite Serbia, Romania is not too far behind the join. They usually join it. It's like a combo deal. But they need to be at war with Austria. Also make sure the game is running in the background. No reason for you to be paused while I'm looking at all this stuff. Um I mean, I will say that our industry is a little bit bad. 21 factories is not that good on military production. But I also, I honestly don't see... Well, CSA is very much dead. So I guess we're backing into the Pacific States of the United States. The American Union is a, is a non-starter for us. But again, they're the only faction that can actually join the Rice Pack, and I see no reason for me to want to be at war with the United States. I think overall, it would just lead to bad times. Because, right, the Germans, you actually don't have any volunteers. Crippling strikes, looming war. Um. Well, you, it's it's 38 right now. These tax are research. We go for another level of extraction. No, we're not. We're going to go for research tech. Anything else I think would be a little bit silly. Okay, so we now have our anti. Finnish force. Again, we're not going to be worrying about the Northern Front. It doesn't matter. Especially since some Sweden is in the International. We doubly do not need to worry about Scandinavia too much. The Genghis Khan legacy. A famous linguist and historian, Prince Nikolai Trubetskoy, uh, turned into politics in the 1930s. Isn't that who our leader is? Yeah. Well, you've written a book. 
Uh, turn to politics 1930s is now chosen to codify his ideological doctrine and Eurasianism into a single book. Angus Khan's legacy, a look at Russian history from the East, is already making a rounds across Russian literary circles and crude quotes are being passed around uh, the public. Eurasianism believes the concept of a living space, uh, geographical conditions which uh, define a people living within them. People who live in the same biome or geographic area form a common civilization and a natural desire to unite. Russia, in their view, forms the core of the steppe civilization, which accompanies all the people of Eastern Europe and uh, Central Asia. Eurasians describe them to be the collective kingship and call for them to unite under Russian rule. Uh, Tupergetskoy declares that the Grand Duchy of Moscow, and therefore Russia, is successor to the Mongol Empire, and Genghis Khan was a hero of the Russian people. This Russia Eurasian needs to embody uh, ideas and beliefs that Eurasianists are of Eurasian, selflessness, heroism, social hierarchy, and obedience. Eurasians believe that democracy is a form of governance for sea people and completely unfitting for Russia. Not only should Russia fight against democracy being opposed upon it, but also liberate other non-European nations from Western rule and defeat what they perceive as Western culturalism and imperialism. So the current president of Russia does not believe in democracy. We do have an election in, in four more years. I don't think we're going to get there, per se. Okay, high pass declared war on Madras. I mean, Hybrid's an interesting case because again, if Hybrid wins, they can't theoretically align with Russia, but of, of course they are going to align with the Japanese just because it's way easier to align with Japan. We do have some building slots open. I wouldn't mind improving infrastructure. Let's see if we can maybe upgrade some railroads around here. Again, crank that to the top of Ah, you're almost done. Let's just say you down to uh, one factory here. And let's get our um, industry up as well as we can. I'm gonna put more production on the rifles for right now. Because I think it's I think it makes sense. We have about 35-ish days until we're ready to I think just go to war Germany. Uh, it's roughly a year early. But I think it makes sense. I know there's probably people in the comments being like, you're a fucking idiot. Or even conceiving that you can go to war in Germany in 1938. But I'm a, I'm a man. And I, I believe in my own superiority over the rest of Europe. I can do this. Baltic Duchy? German. Or, no, not German. Russian. Lithuania? Russian. White Ruthenia? Russian. Ukraine? Russian. Poland? I'm going to say it's a little bit of Russian. Again... It depends on uh, future geopolitical situations, whether or not we annex uh, Poland or not. Poland Artillery, we can upgrade you, and I will do so. Can't modify- no, keep- stop lying to me that we can modify government. We absolutely cannot. Another factory in Moscow. Yeah, and just keep upgrading railroad infrastructure for right now. We don't need to build anything over here because Narva is a uh, supply depot. So we'll be able to take that relatively easily and we'll push our way to Riga as quickly as we possibly can. Lithuania. You are... I actually don't know which path you're going down. It would be nice if Lithuania were to clear independence uh, when we invade. I would absolutely allow Lithuania to join our faction. But aside from that, I mean, Ukraine's not going to join. Baltic Duchy is not going to collapse at this point. Way too late for that. Tall Republic, I am going to save. Because even though I say that I can destroy Eastern Europe, I'm still a little bit of a coward in case this completely backfires. The Ottoman Rose and Non-Aggression Pact. After tanks roll west and Russian boots will march through Kiev and Riga, our government has turned its eyes south to the precarious oil deposits in the Caucasus and previously held regions of Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. Thinking of that, we should actually send troops down there. By doing so, however, we are likely to infringe on the Turkish sphere of influence as actions uh, with not as of yet unclear consequences. The Turks, well aware of our interest in the region, have decided to break with Germany, uh, however, and are offering us through diplomatic back channels the opportunity to regain the, our lands diplomatically. In exchange for a 10 year non aggression pact and the settlement of various Russia Ottoman differences, such as the Turkish Straits, Persia, and Armenia. I'm going to do a Baku conference. And I am going to uh, send you over here. Delete all your old orders. You really should be on the line of Baku, pushing away here immediately. I'm going to keep units. You know what? Okay. I'm going to try to get just a simple five stack to deal with Georgia. 
the Baku Conference. Hosted on the shores of the Caspian Sea of the Azraji capital of Baku, uh, very diplomatic officers and businessmen from both the Ottoman Empire and the Russian Republic have gathered top secret to discuss the future of the Caucasus and with it the world. Although uh, animus on both sides of the peace resolution is high, it seems unlikely that an uh, agreement can be found as overland demand stemming from centuries of Russo Ottoman conflicts may prove too deep a wound to ever heal. Again, Audrey Jean, you are guaranteed by uh, Germany, but if you were to both theoretically join my faction, I would absolutely allow you to live, right? The matter of Georgia. Long held by the Russian Empire, the state of Georgia is a vital interest to us and the easiest to crack in the German defenses. Linked up to Audrey Jean through railroad in the Baku Pati pipeline, and furthermore serves as a key station for refueling our troops, uh, fighting deep into the Ukraine and a fortification that can threaten the Ottoman Empire. Although none question that Ger uh, Georgia should one way or another return to the Russian sphere, there remains a divide on whether or not we should serve as an allied state or an integral part of the Russian Republic. Furthermore, it remains questionable that Georgia could easily be swayed by offers of their former occupiers. You know what? Again, I'm nice. Well, just be in our sphere of influence. And if you're in my sphere, I will absolutely allow you to live. Because, I honestly, I know some people really like conquering a lot of territory. I feel like, typically, I like going to more the status of Otomi. Which is somewhere. I, no, you're Batom. Conquered by the Russian Empire in the 19th century, the important port city of Batumi has, uh, was regained by the Ottoman Empire with the Treaty of Bretz-Litov. This city, traditionally the bulwark of economic power in the Caucasus and a symbol of great pride for the Jordan people, could not just be prove a valuable card to play negotiations with the Georgian government, but also serve as a way to bypass the Turkish defensive lines. It is, however, very unlikely that the Turks would accept this demand, sacrificing their defensibility of the, the realm, and give up one of their only gains in the Wildkrieg. Um... Yeah, we're, we're not gonna push taking Batum. Afghanistan? The matter of Afghanistan. Talking between our holdings in Central Asia and the rich Indians of the continent, Afghanistan serves a key role in facilitating Russia meddling in India. With the British Empire crushed by the unrelenting Red Tide, their power to contest their influence in Kabul was all but evaporated. As such, leaving India ripe for the taking. Although we do not need permission from the Turks to extort the claims on Afghanistan, the acknowledgement of the Sultan Caliph would go a long way in boosting our legitimacy in our takeover and divided the Islamic Islamic ties. Again, I don't really want to invade Afghanistan. It, again, it, it pro proves to be a valuable buffer state. If they're in my faction, I can use their manpower and stuff. The Ottoman proposed splitting the Persian Empire. Put in two by the Anglo-Russian Convention for the Vidalkrieg, the collapse of the first Russian and later British empires have granted Persia a moment of respite, as it was able to turn inwards and re restructure its struggling state apparatus. Nonetheless, it has not been able to remain at peace as renewed border conflicts with the Ottoman Empire over Iraqi Kurdistan and the Persian Gulf have placed the old rivals again at each other's uh, with daggers drawn. With Russian interference banned down in Central Asia and the Caucasus, the government has deemed it necessary to demand eastern expansion uh, so as to ensure the buffer remains between themselves and our ever-expanding influence. Whilst many were pleading for the restoration of an independent Iran, serving as a buffer, the government overturned this plan demanding that the Ottomans take a more decisive role in Iran, ensuring that Kurdistan, Azerbaijan, and Kuzestan remain in the Ottoman sphere of influence, lest they remain a victim of Russian interference in the weakened Tehran. Okay, we'll agree, we'll, we'll split Iran. We actually have a claim on them right now. You're, you're actually, okay, you're not a core, you're just a regular claim. They demand in our, uh, our Azari buffer state. To ensure that the eastern flank is secured and to protect the status of the Turkic brethren in Baku, the Turkish government has demanded that Azerbaijan be excluded from any imperialist ambitions. Working together with the Azari government, they have, however, promised a fair amount of concessions to make our stance more palatable. The Azari oil reserves, desperately needed by the Russian war machine, will be leased to the Russian Republic for a period of 10 years or until the end of the Russo-German War, while special rights will be granted to the Orthodox population of the small country, protected by the Russian Republic. In exchange, the Ottoman government demands a complete independence of the Argentine government and the right to connect their capital to the Ottoman rail network. You know what? I will agree to their terms. I, me and Russia, we can be tight. That's a lot of German troops on our border. Okay. Greece is now in a civil war. Oh, wait, they actually get more land now. Oh, okay. That's actually good for the uprising, because they used to start, like, I think, like, literally right here, and they'd die immediately. I'm guessing this is because of No Step Back, and they spawned literally right here, they would have no supplies. Anyway, the London Straits Convention. 
Concluded in the 13th of July 1841, the Lion's Strait Convention has regulated traffic to the Turkish Strait ever since. This treaty, which stipulates that only Ottoman warships can travel from the Black Sea to the Mediterranean, has long been seen by Russia as a slap in the face for her ambitions. As the discussion with the Ottoman Empire reached her apex, the government has considered a new push for Russian access through the Straits. This revised treaty, which would equate to restoring the Treaty of Hakar uh, Iskeli, uh, might however be seen as too great a threat to the Ottoman Empire, whose control over the Eastern Mediterranean has been near total for the last few decades. Again, I have no reason to go to the Mediterranean. Well, we'll push that aside. I, I really want... The liberation of, uh, of Armenia. Was all our matters brought to satisfying conclusion, there only remains one matter, the matter of Armenia. The ancient lands of Armenia spread out across the eastern vilayets of the Ottoman Empire, but the main battleground between the two empires in the Vil Creek. It served as a stark reminder of the horrors of war of ethnic cleansing from both sides made the river overflow with the blood of men, women, and children. A protector of the Orthodox faith, our interest in Armenia has always been led to friction between ourselves and the Ottoman Empire, and with our defeat of the Treaty of Bretz Litov, we had no choice but to cede the region of Yevren to the marauding Ottoman Turks. Two decades have passed since then, with Russia restoring the old glory of old, Hawks and the government have uh, urged us to blow off the deal with the Ottoman Turks by demanding to liberate Armenia, a demand that they will surely refuse. Again, I'm, I'm fine. You want to keep Armenia for right now? That's okay. Okay. Ramification of Russian Ottoman Convention. As the Ottoman and Russian Ministers of Foreign Affairs placed their signatures under the now infamous Russo Ottoman Convention of, 18, of 1938, it seems that we will indeed achieve peace in the Caucasus. Although the plethora of minor issues have been excluded from the treaty, leaving those for later negotiations that are destined to settle in Europe, the event marks a grand leap towards uh, floors in the Russian Ottoman relations. Various Caucasian and Central Asian countries look on in fear, however, that the uncertain future discussed in broad strokes over the bottle of Raki may soon turn for the worst. So we'll see how this plays out. American CSA is now completely dead. So am I agreeing not to invade Georgia and Azerbaijan? I honestly don't really know. But it seems like we have uh, similar ideology. Yeah, I mean, it seems like we made some headway. The so one fa- eh, no. One factory in Petrograd. And German troops are flooding their way towards the border. They're actually taking bad supply issues. Again, does this... Yes. As you can see now, demand asphalt rain is completely available. I don't know like what actually happened on the French side that changes this focus. Ottoman Empire wants an aggression pact. Absolutely, I would accept it. Never another Brett's Litov. Now with the situation of Russia is beginning to stabilize, the Russian people have begun to turn westwards. Uh, the Treaty of Brett's Litov has been freighted as an example of a punitive treaty ever since its inception. But only now has Russia gotten confident enough to consider repudiating it. Pretty president are publishing maps and treaties where Russian uh, Western neighbors are de declared Russian or German occupied Western territories, and the local living there are described as suffering and waiting for the return of Mother Russia. This is one issue which can unite uh, the Russian right, left, and center, uh, though for different reasons. Russian nationalists obviously seek revenge against Germany, whereas the left is in Germany, or left see Germany as a hegemon, which prevents the rise of socialism and syndicalism in Europe. No matter what regime may be in charge, you'll need a place or you can't have Russia's Western territories the top priority list. You want to see Russia start this war, however? The general line of thought among the Russian populists and intellectual politicians that Russia needs to wait, observe, and descend like a hawk when Germany is focused elsewhere. Well, it's a little bit too late for that since we we're about to clear war in about like 30 days ish. It looks like Greece is going to go socialist, which I'm not happy with for the obvious reason that I really wanted Greece to join my sphere of influence. And you're almost certainly going to end up joining up with the Internationale, which is not, like, the worst. But I would have preferred, you know, something a little bit better. There's three provinces here, too. There's three. We'll bring some units back. Our lines here seem like they're doing okay. And how are our spies looking? Did we get our cipher done? No, it's 13%. Okay, it's... How long would you take? 5,000 days. I guess we might need to get a... Decryption upgrade. 5,000 days. That's like, what, like 15 years? I don't think we have 15 years to wait. 
Monarchy is restored to Greece. Okay, maybe it's a little bit too late for that. Yeah, I mean... Greece is definitely going to fall to the socialist. And then there's like no way around that. And we don't know what you're doing. It would be nice if you're demanding Alice of Rain, but I cannot guarantee it. And again, like, Georgia, apparently you actually like us. Same ideology, trade partners. It's like, I would absolutely allow you guys to exist. But I don't remember if you're going to... Oh, no, okay, you're going to actually do several different things. Okay. Georgia, Afghanistan, and Azerbaijan are going to get some events. Ottomans are going to get claims on this territory here. I don't know if I actually get any more claims on Iran, but we'll see. I would love it if the if this does not happen and we can remain having peace in the Caucasus. Apparently we do get an event as well. Can intervenes in the civil war. Really? Yeah, there are war make Arthur in the Union State. Yeah, that's fine. I really, I really don't have any grandiose statement about that. The Rush, though, Ottoman Convention. We'll see what George and Arjun want to do. And I think with that, it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Now do it, click thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.